Hi guys! Um, last month I presented at a science teachers uh, conference and I had a session on um, stoichiometry and how to make it hands-on. And so I have markers all over my hands and I'm going to show you how you can get your kids to internalize stoichiometry and molar conversions in a way that's going to help them to um, internalize the process instead of just going through some kind of meaningless algorithm that they um, need a sheet to do. So I think that all my chemistry teachers out there are probably familiar with some kind of like graphic organizer or flow chart that you may give your students that just takes them through steps and so um, I know especially with lower level students this is a really common practice teachers will just hand this out and say here's how to do it and so you know find where you are in this flow chart and then just work through the steps um, the first time I taught chemistry about 10 years ago, I did this and I was really inexperienced. And so I kind of took a little sabbatical from chemistry and, and moved to environmental science. And when I came back to it last year, um, I really didn't want my kids to have this experience where they just follow steps but don't really understand what's going on. So I kind of had a light bulb moment and I saw the molas really, you know, the central um, unit for conversion. And it's so integral to uh, stoichiometry and it's it's the basis for how we can take things that we can't see and measure them on a balance right so you all know that but you know, if we look at human history, mathematics is a pretty new invention, and it's kind of interesting. The part of our brain that uh, controls our finger movement is actually the same part of our brain that um, controls numerical representation. So I think I may have hit on something that I wasn't even aware of in, in using this with my students. And so what it cut down on was the graphic organizer, totally not necessary anymore. But even my lowest level kids that struggle with math, they really exceeded on my stoichiometry test, and it was actually one of the, the better units the, um, if I look at test scores. So it was pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to actually link in the written part of the blog to all the things that I'm about to use. I have some handouts and I have the article that talks about uh, tactile uh, motion and kinesthetic motion in learning. So um, pretty good mind shift article there. So what I'm going to do is um, this lesson is actually going to come in my curriculum right after I have covered um, moles and, and what Avogadro's number means. So um, uh, after we have already talked about moles and Avogadro's number, um, when they're walking in the door on the next day of the unit, I actually have them hold their hand out and with a washable marker, not with a Sharpie that I'm going to use in the video, but with a washable marker, I'm just going to put a little dot on their hand. And if you find a brown marker, that's even better. And so on their palm, if this was a student, I would just put a little dot right here. And then part of their warm up is going to be, you know, what does that dot on your hand look like? And they're going to say a mole. And so we're going to end up writing the word mole on our hands. Uh, if we go ahead and fill out the rest, um, and you do this stepwise, um, we've already learned that Avogadro's number relates to formula units, atoms, and molecules. Um, and so I call this the Avogadro family, fam, formula units, atoms, molecules, right? And so these um, are the only units that we're going to use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd with, okay? And so I can see here, if this is my hand, um, that if I want to go from formula units to moles or from moles to formula units, that's just going to be one step. So I have some practice problems to kind of show you how this works. Um, so just kind of typical question, if you have so many formula units of, this case, lithium carbonate, how many moles are present? And so the kids can look at their hand and go, okay, that's just one step. So they can start with the formula units they're given. And they can see that the conversion is one step. And the, the cool thing about this is whatever unit you're going to, like if they're pointing to their palm, that is um, going to be the top of the, the fraction that they're going to use. So start with formula units, and then moles will be on the top of the next fraction. So uh, one mole of lithium carbonate is going to be uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, formula units. And so there's the work all done. Um, and as you kind of progress through this, if you want to work um, on mass, right, your grams are going to go on the next finger, grams to moles or moles to grams. The second problem that I have here is asking uh, the students to go from moles to uh, mass. And so if I'm going from moles to mass, then that's going to be one step. I'm going to start with moles and grams is going to be on the top of the second fraction. So here we go, 3.45 moles 
of aluminum sulfate. And then um, I've given you the molar mass. Every time you get the molar mass in a problem, I'm pretty sure Angel gets its wings. Um, everybody hates adding that up. But anyway, uh, one mole is 342.15 grams of aluminum sulfate. And so there the kids can see that it's just one step because you know as well as I do what they're going to do is if they're trying to go from atoms to moles, they're going to pull in grams and then they have too many steps and they have um, numbers. They're just making fractions, trying to make things cancel, but they don't get the concept. And so this really shows them that the mole is central to this. You have to go to moles to really to get to anywhere. Um, and if you want to teach uh, gas stoichiometry, that's part of your curriculum. Um, I put that into number four. We have molecules, and we want to go to, excuse me, molecules, and we want to go to volume. So the kids now can see that if we start with molecules, and we're going to, um, to liters, which is volume, I can see that I'm going to need one, two steps, right? The, my second fraction will have moles on the top, and my third fraction will have liters on top. So if we just set that up, number four, um, start with 6.25 times 10 to the 24th molecules. And then we're going to go to moles because that's the next step if we look at our palm. Um, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules is one mole. And then, of course, we see now that we're going to need to go to liters. Okay. So liters will be on the top of the next fraction. We have 22.4 liters at STP uh, is one mole. And I'm abbreviating a little bit by not putting my, um, my formula each time, so forgive me. Um, and so that really helps them to see how many steps and then also what they need to have in the next conversion. And then this really translates well into um, stoichiometry. We're looking at mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry where I actually have a chemical reaction taking place instead of just one substance. If that happens, um, and that's part of your uh, curriculum, which I'm sure it is, you'll have moles of substance A, right? So uh, when you're ready to do mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry or a mole-to-mass stoichiometry, you're going to have them come in, and then the next day, uh, when you're ready, you're going to put a dot or a little mole on their other palm, usually their right hand at this point. So, and then they're going to say, are we going to use our other hand? Yes, yes you are. And so everything gets labeled the same, but now this becomes substance A, and this becomes substance B. And we have our, like I said, our little Avogadro family, formula units, atoms and molecules, gram, fam, and liter. It's a nice way to remember it. Fam, gram, and liter kind of sounds good. Um, and so if we have a chemical reaction now, what the kids struggle with on this is um, they fail to get the mole ratio, right? And so if this is my chemical reaction that's occurring, and this problem is a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem, what I'm going to see as I talk to them with this, um, I'm starting with grams of a substance, 210.5 grams of calcium nitrate, and it's asking me, um, if I read it, how many grams of calcium chloride can I make? So I'm going from grams of reactant to grams of product. Grams of substance A to grams of substance B. So if I look at that, the kids are going to see that you're going to start with substance A, grams. I'm going to go to moles. Okay, And then, how do I get to the other substance? we got to put our hands together. When you put your hands together, the part that's going to be touching is your palms. And it helps them to see that to get from one substance to the other, you have no other choice than to go to moles, okay? So they'll get to moles of B using the mole ratio, and then they'll be able to go to grams. And so we kind of talk ourselves through this. Um, if I start with 210.5 grams of calcium nitrate, and I'm gonna go to moles of calcium nitrate, and so moles will go on top, one mole of calcium nitrate, and it has a mass of 164.09. And then my mole ratio, using the bounce equation up here, I have three moles of calcium nitrate uh, to three moles of calcium chloride. And then the final step, and I ran out of room, I'm sure that happens to you sometimes too, um, we need to go from moles of calcium chloride to grams, and so I know I need grams on top, and the molar mass is given to me here 
is 110.98. is one mole. And so there's the whole setup. We start on the middle finger, go to the palm, put our hands together, and we go to the next middle finger. And they can see following along the steps what the top of the next fraction is so they don't get lost, and then also how many fractions they need, and then they don't pull in off a Godro's number when it's completely unnecessary. So that's kind of a quick and uh, easy tutorial. I'll put these documents that I used on my blog on the written part and uh, my own students are outside now. So uh, bye you guys.